You know, one of my favorite writers in the Bible is John. The, the writings of John are so intimate. And that's because John was intimate with Jesus. The, the Bible says that John, he, he would put his head on the chest of Jesus. That's really close. John was a, a zealous man, being just not man. Even before he met Jesus, he was like a political activist. Oh, you understand? Political. <laughs> yeah, political. He loved politics. But when he found Jesus, he found truth. <laughs> he found purpose. He found life. And so he was not quiet about Jesus. Yeah. Even after Jesus went back to heaven, John was not, he could not be silenced. Now, because he was so loud for Jesus, he would get in trouble. <laughs> The Roman government wanted to silence John. Now, how many of you, you like sports? Does any of your sports in, involve death? <laughs> Now, during the time of, of the Roman occupation, they had different kinds of sports. They would put a man on the field and they would put two lions and just see what would happen. And many times the people, the men would die. That was their sports. That's a little different from what we see today. Huh? Now, they wanted to kill John, but they wanted to do it a little different. So, on the field, they put a big pot of oil. And they put John in it. <laughs> and they lit it on fire. <laughs> they wanted to see John burn. <laughs> but you know what happened? <laughs> John stepped out of the pot. Com completely unharmed. Everybody in the stadium, they dropped to their knees. And they surrendered to King Jesus. So they took John. They couldn't kill him. They, they put him on the island of Patmos. <laughs> That's where they would put people to punish them. But they still could not silence John. <laughs> 
On this island, he writes the book of Revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. John said, He said, One day I was in the spirit of the Lord's day. And all of a sudden he heard a voice behind him. He turned around to see. I tell you what, I want to stop right now. I want to pray. Heavenly Father, I invite your spirit into this place. I see there's many people in the room that are very tired. They're falling asleep. And you have something that you want to speak to them about. I pray that you would wake them up right now. That they would receive all that you have in store. You have something you want to pour out today. But you're going to pour it out on hungry people. So I thank you for the anointing that gives energy to us to stay awake. Because we need you, Lord. We need to encounter you. There are nations that are going to hell. Unless the church awakens. And we know your power. And we take the gospel to the nations. So wake us up, Lord. To encounter you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now John, he turns around. And this is what he saw in Revelation chapter 1. It says his head and his hair were like wool, white as glistening snow, and his eyes were like flames of fire. Jesus, he's giving us, he's giving us a description of what Jesus looks like. His eyes are like a flame of fire, Alfie. Check out verse 15. His feet were like gleaming, were gleaming like bright metal, as though they were glowing in a fire. And his voice was like the roar of many rushing waters. His voice is like rushing water, church. Look at verse 16. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword, and his face was shining like the brightness of the blinding sun. Church, can you see Jesus? He is holy. He 
He is awesome. I mean, He is awesome, church. John wrote the book of Revelation after encountering Him. We've been talking about how God speaks. God speaks to us through personally visiting us. I remember when the Lord visited me. I was so hungry for God. For three months, I would, I would lie down on the floor and I would just wait on the Lord. I would cry out to God. God, I need you. I have to encounter you. I'm hungry for you. I wouldn't eat. I would only eat at night. One meal a day. For three months. Because I wanted to encounter the Lord. I knew if I was going to do something great for God, I had to encounter Him. So one night, I get in my car. I was at a church meeting. And they laid hands on me. And nothing happened. But there was people all around me. They were falling out under the power of God. But when I went in my car, I began to cry out to God. I began to pray. And I saw the Lord waiting for me at my house. So when I got about five miles from my house, all of a sudden I felt drunk in the Holy Spirit. Some of you are saying drunk. Yes, I was drunk in the spirit. You know, in Psalms chapter 65, in the original language, it says that God makes the earth drunk with his visitation. You know, when you drink alcohol, it's like drinking poison. You drink enough of it, you will die. But it changes you. You begin to walk a little bit differently. <laughs> you speak differently. You think differently. And if we are drunk on God, we're going to begin to think like Him. All of a sudden, there's a boldness that comes on you. It's the presence of the Lord. You start thinking like God. And so listen, when I got to my house, I had so much faith in my heart. This was my faith. I'm going to walk in my house. And I'm going to blink. And I'm going to see God. That's, that's what I thought. So I went into my room. And God came. I was like a little baby. 
I was on my bed. And I felt like I was holding on to the hand of God. And I was shaking. And I, I gripped God's hand as hard as I could. And as I did that, my whole body just shook so violently. God was calling me. He was speaking to me. He was calling me into life with him. That encounter that happened in 2005 is still speaking to me today. God wants you to encounter him. Some people come to church and they want to change a little bit. <laughs> they start changing, they take little baby steps. <laughs> they think, you know, the older I get, well then I'm going to change just a little bit more. <laughs> but you know what God wants to do? He wants to encounter you and change your whole world. <laughs> He wants to make everything new. But some of you are disqualifying yourself in your mind. You say, well, God would never meet with me. Because I'm whatever. But when I look at the Bible, I find that God chooses people that I would have never chosen. <laughs> you know Jacob? <laughs> he was a deceiver. <laughs> he was a liar. <laughs> I would not have liked the God. <laughs> I would not have wanted him around me. <laughs> he was always looking at you like, what can I get out of this God? <laughs> but God saw something in him. And Jacob, one day he was running for his life. And one day he found himself, he was sleeping in a certain place. And he had a dream. And if you ever have a dream, yeah. You know God can meet you in your dreams? <laughs> Jacob had a dream and he saw a ladder that was set up on the earth all the way to heaven. He, he saw the angels going up <laughs> and God began to speak to him from the top of the ladder. He began to call Jacob. Jacob woke up from the dream. He said, God is here, and I didn't even know it. He said, this is none other than the house of God. There's an open heaven right there. You know, last week, Teresa said, Jeremy, there's, there's an open heaven right here. Alfie, you felt the presence of God last week? You all right? You slow it down? Yeah. What's that? You feel the glory? Lord, let him 
feel your presence. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel the presence of the Lord. Thank you. I feel like today we're going to have a party. <laughs> okay. I really do. I got a lot to say, but I just feel like, man, at what point do we just party? <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. But there was what we call a portal or an open heaven right here. And Alfie, Alfie really got touched by the Lord. I got hit by the Lord. This is the house of God. This is a house of prayer. I'm telling you, what is being taught here every week, I'm not getting from Google. <laughs> the Lord is speaking to me to equip the church. Because God wants a people that will grab a hold of the kingdom. There was a man named Charles Finney. He lived about 200 years ago in America. Everywhere he went, he would start revivals. He went to a city called Rochester. Almost every single person in the city got saved. 100,000 people got saved. This is what he said about revival. <coughs> he said, I could feel the heavy weight of people's souls. And he said, I could not stop praying for them. He said, sometimes a spirit of persistence would come upon me. He said, I would say to God, you made a promise to answer prayer, and I cannot and will yeah, not good. be denied <laughs> by God. <laughs> These are the words of a man that knew how to bring heaven to earth. Now, outside of a real relationship with God, this sounds crazy. But for people that are in a covenant with God, you realize that God gave everything for you. I mean, if he would not hold back his only son, so you get a revelation of this, okay? Then you give everything to God. In that kind of covenant relationship with God, this is beautiful. This is so right. <coughs> now, Jesus actually taught this. <laughs> Jesus taught the disciples to never stop praying. <laughs> to never give up hope. And he gave us this story. I hope you get the story. 
<laughs> Jesus said there was a judge. He did not fear God. And he didn't fear people. But there was a lady. She was a widow. And she went to the judge. And she said, You have to give me justice. <laughs> now look at what Jesus shares in verse uh, verse 4. Jesus says he ignored her pleas for quite some time, but she kept asking. Eventually, he said to himself, this widow keeps annoying me, demanding her rights, and I'm tired of listening to her. Even though I'm not a religious man and don't care about the opinions of others, I'll just get her off my back by answering her claims for justice, and I'll rule in her favor. Then she'll leave me alone. <laughs> ចេះតាពុនជាពេលយ៉ាងយូរក្រោយមកលោកនឹកក្នុងចិត្តថាតួងបៃអាំមិនកោះខ្លាចព្រះអភិរាជាម្ចាស់មិនកោះក្រោយ
That's been the season that I'm in. Night and day I'm crying out to the Lord. So that you would encounter God. You got to get hungry for God. You have to get desperate for God. You got to know God's promises. Jesus promises that he will meet you and I. Anybody want to encounter the Lord? God promises that he'll encounter you. Sometime, come up here.